You're listening to Paulette Edwards. So you do remember, I'm sure, the Sheffield tree protest. The row was over a street improvement project starting uh, sorting, sorting with trees fell by council contractors Amy. Campaigners claimed many were healthy and could be saved with amendments to surrounding curbs and roads. <laughs> The manner in which this operation's been carried out leaves a very nasty taste in the mouth indeed. It's disgraceful. And just for anybody's benefit, I've taken extensive films. I've been here a little while this morning. I did turn up rather late. I didn't find out it was happening until quarter to seven this morning when I was informed of residents being knocked out of their beds at 2 a.m. to move their cars to... uh, ladies arrested outside their own house these trees are not diseased the damage to the pavement is minimal if this was any other city than sheffield alternative engineering specifications would be used i am excuse me hans christian anderson didn't write fairy tales as big as that talking about writing fairy tales, writing <laughs> stories. So that was a tree protester Dave Dillner speaking to BBC Radio Sheffield in November 2017. And there were mixed responses to the protest, but um, has the story ever been told from the tree's point of view? Well, someone who's now created a children's story around the fate of one of Sheffield's trees um, is Lydia Monks. She's a best-selling author and illustrator and uh, kind of bristling a little bit listening back to that. It, it's funny hearing Dave. I mean, Dave Dillner sort of introduced me to this particular tree that I was interested in. Um, I, it was outside my little girl's school and I'd found out it was going to be cut down. And Dave, I can't remember how I met Dave. I, it must have been on Facebook or something. But he said, oh, if you want to come with me, I'm having a meeting with an arborist about that tree. We're just going to see if there's anything wrong with it. So I met Dave very early on outside the school in the protest. I mean, very early on before I knew anything about it. And uh, we had a very long meeting with an arborist who was took great pains to explain to us there was nothing wrong with the tree. Mm. Um, so it was that that sort of got me interested. So it's Dave. It's funny to hear Dave because Dave, yeah. Dave, Dave's the to blame. Yeah, he's part but, uh, of that jigsaw puzzle. Yes, he's part of that he jigsaw was. Puzzle. Yeah. So after that, I just got interested in what was going on and. You know, particularly that tree that we knew so well because we walked past it every day. And it was the, I, I think I liked the idea of it having stood there for maybe 100 years or more, just all the changes it had seen on that street and and how it sort of silently watched all this happening around it. And so it just got me thinking about yeah. the life of that particular tree. It's if trees had eyes, isn't That's it? It's it. that kind yeah. of story. If they could which, tell us the story. Yeah, because for me, reading the book, um, I, I can see the relationship. It's almost as if you're like, oh, you've always been there. Oh, there's a chance that you could go. And there's almost a grieving process that starts then and you realise how significant that tree was to your life. Yeah, You've I think probably never thought about that's it before. It. We pass them every day and don't necessarily think about it, but it was only when it was going and you'd see people crying, really upset about him and genuinely devastated that that tree... And again, it's not something you really think about. And again, lots of people thought that was ridiculous, but lots of people built up those relationships with the trees on their street, weirdly. You just took them for granted and it was only when they're going and all the things that went with them, all the wildlife, the owls, the birds, the insects, you know, the conquer in the autumn. It was only when that was going that people were then like, oh, I don't want it to go. Yeah. I was thinking about a tree. I always think about this particular tree that is um, at the bottom of my mum's road near the library that I would have walked past it would be thousands of times, won't it? Yeah. And I'm thinking, that tree saw me growing up from being a little girl to being a woman. Yeah. I drive past that tree now, so she knows that I can drive now. And I often think about that whole story. So that's what came together to make this book Adoet. Then. Yeah. That's it. Adawet means big tree. Right. It's a Native American name, apparently, for big tree. But you're not when you read the book. I sort of want the idea that you don't really know it's about a tree to start with. That's that's what I wanted to kind of. I don't know if that works or not. It does. I know it so well now, so I can't tell. I if think that what, works. what I noticed about it was it, it, through the pictures. I won't give anything away. <laughs> I mean, obviously, parents are going to be reading this yeah. book millions of times, but you don't want to give anything away. You, no. you need to invest as a you parent do, yeah. as well in it. But but as I looked at the illustrations, I thought, oh, there's something going on here <laughs> and I started to build up a picture. So what has Adouette seen then? 
Well, she's seen... I, I like to think of her... She saw the houses being built around her, so she was there before the houses. They And the Victorians were very keen on their trees, so they built the houses around her to protect her. Um, then she saw the arrival of cars, I imagine. She was used to horses and carts, and then cars came. She saw the street get busier. She saw people from different countries arrive on the street. She saw maybe a few protests start to happen with people. You know, the busier the street got, the more upset people got with various things. And just how life got busier and people got more impatient I suppose and not maybe so considerate of what might be in their way. Which says a lot about our trees and, and what they're mapping actually yeah. for us and why they're so important. I am talking to Lydia Monk so you've actually uh, written drawn pictures rather for uh, Julia Donaldson, you did the Gruffalo didn't you? No I didn't. Oh, no, I always say that, you know every single time you come in I say that and you're always really good because I just go yeah I did no, I, I did. go like yeah I did. I did what I can't, Ax- Axel kill me if I take uh, right, okay. credit well, for the t- Gruffalo we'll t- I did what the ladybird heard. That's right and you always say that to me as well. We'll come back and we'll talk a bit more about uh, Adouet as well, lovely Adouet. Is it just children's books that you do then? Yes. Yes, mainly. Yeah. So we're talking about Adouet, this beautiful book that you've written about, it's fundamentally about trees. It's about a Sheffield tree. Yes. That's quite sort crucial. Sort of, well, it is, but it's, you won't recognise it. You won't recognise the street as Sheffield because obviously this is going on everywhere. Yeah. You know, so I wanted it, I didn't want to be too focused on Sheffield. It's, it's, but it's definitely, you'll recognise it as a UK street. Yes. Yeah. Sheffield. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> On this tree campaign then, uh, looking back and you were saying you were getting, you know, just listening to Dave uh, Dave Dillner talking um, earlier, uh, so Nick Clegg, Jarvis Cocker, Chris Packham all got involved. Do you remember what that felt like? Well, it was good. It just felt that suddenly, because I think people, you know, people locally have been shouting about it for years and suddenly to get big names picking up on it just really helped get it into the public eye a bit more. So that was quite a turning point, I think. Any sort of big names. I mean, you know, Nick Clegg, you know, obviously it's not everyone's favourite but he did do he was very good was the local MP he, he did get involved and, and shout about it so um, it was great to have people like that and Chris Packham was brilliant mm. um, but I remember we even had Michael Gove turned up to yeah. one day so it, it definitely helped to get all that sort of national attention and they're being rewarded actually in this book haven't they for their <laughs> efforts I've been rewarded yes <laughs> Do you want to say how or do you want to leave um, that a secret? I dedicated the book to lots of people who were involved in the tree campaign, um, as many as I could think of. Obviously, there were hundreds of people. But, yeah, we've um, got Jarvis Cocker, we've got Everly Pregnant Brothers in there, we've got Big Sean in there mentioned, yep. Ian Rotherham, yep. who comes on to talk about you know, the environment and nature and all of that. So all of these people have been rewarded in your very yeah. clever way, actually. Yeah, I, um, I just wanted to... Cause People did so much. I mean, you know, I was involved in a very small way, but people did loads and people put their lives sort of at, not their lives at risk, but, you know, just getting arrested. At yeah, risk. they did, yeah. Mm. So I just felt, you know, I just put a few names in the back. It's very pretty <laughs> how you've done it. I won't give that away. The author's note at the back of this book is quite a long one and quite a detailed one and quite unusual for a children's book, Lydia, yeah. would you say? Why did you think it was necessary? I think it's such a personal story. You know, this story really came from the heart, so I wanted to write something about how the story came to be. Um and the publishers were quite happy for me to do that. I think because it was spurred from a real life experience, I think it was it was kind of nice to put that in to explain that because all the stories we write tend to be inspired from things we see every day. So, you know, something so awful that happened inspired what, what I hope is something yeah. quite nice. And I think in that, in the author's note, for me is uh, custodians of the earth now, not children, but this is for children as well to raise their conscience you know at whatever yeah. age they are but it's also there's also a message in there for the adults who could have done better yeah is that what you're well saying? that's what i would say you'd hope that maybe mistakes can be learned from that's what you'd hope and that maybe they'll do a better job than we have with looking after the planet you'd hope <laughs> yeah I hope so and for you then is it quite unusual for you to do such a personal book yes it is it is unusual because normally obviously you know the kind of books i do do what the ladybird heard and they're all yeah. great but the publishers are much more reluctant to 
to sort of swerve off that course and do, and take the chance of doing something a bit more unusual. So um, it took a long time to get it published. I, mean, I wrote it in 2015. Right. So it was a long process getting someone to take it on board and, and to go with it. And also because it's quite UK based, they like to do books that are have worldwide appeal. This is very UK. So it's just on a practical level. They like to sell. They don't want to take the chance on something that's that won't sell worldwide mm. necessarily. So it's practical things like that. So it takes, that sort of book is harder to get published. And do you think basically. this is the beginning of a new trend for you then? When I've you written, continue with I have the written another one, yeah. I, it's not about the environment, but it's about Sheffield. <laughs> so um, that, but that won't, I have, I've written it, but I've not even started it again, but I won't give that one away. But that's another historical Sheffield right. story that I've written that's been uh, bought by the same publisher. Right, so, so they are be next. listening. They are, oh yeah. 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 So that's yeah. a change because you said it was a struggle for this yeah. one. So yeah, they're, they're quite keen listening. to do another one. Well, yeah. there you go, you yeah. see. So yeah. we're on and on you go. Yeah. And are you illustrating for anyone at the moment? Um, I've just finished, I think I told you before, I've just finished the second book for Floella Benjamin. Yes. yes. So we've got a new book with Floella coming out in October. I've got a new book with um, Julia Donaldson, What the Lady Bird Had at Christmas. That's out in October. But I'm also, I should mention, I'm appearing at the Netheredge Festival on the 10th. Um, so we're do, I'm doing a, a few little Sheffield events uh, before I go off on tour. I'll be going off doing all How the do you find festivals. these tours then? How do you find all that? Uh, uh, it's OK. It's quite tiring. Yeah. It's quite hard. Um it's, it just makes everything busy. If I'm trying to work and go off every weekend, or it's it is quite difficult. I yeah. think. And how and do you how do you find the fans then? People who like oh, you. Oh, they're lovely. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. I mean, it's great meeting everyone. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's really good. I get a little bit nervous always. Of you know, getting up on stage is not my my natural thing. But yeah. um, you know, that's it's lovely meeting everyone, and you know, it is great. Yeah. So you kind of expected great. to be a rock star when. You know, yeah, authors you are, and yeah. illustrators, by yeah. very nature, are often yeah. quite introverts. That's it. Yeah, it's totally opposite to what to what I was, you know, meant to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really a performer up on stage. So, uh, where Julia loves it, Julia loves being up on stage. That's right. what she would have liked to have done. Right. So uh, she takes to it. You know, she just loves it. Where I'm, I'd much rather not. I'd much rather be at my desk paint colouring in. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what, a lot of us would like to be at our desk colouring in. It is very therapeutic. So before I let you go today, we're talking about uh, thank you for the book as well That's it's just okay. beautiful um before i let you go and, and i liked it because it's adequate which sounds a bit like paul so yeah, that, does, I, liked yeah. that. I thought of that nigella lawson has said that uh, given us permission to use our microwaves more if you've got a microwave recipe you can share with us microwave, the only thing i really do in the microwave is heat up my cups of tea that have gone cold that's, <laughs> that's my top tip do they taste different they do a bit i think but mm. i think that's just because it's been sat around for a while yeah. I was trying to think, what else do we cook in there? I don't really know. I only hear, ever heat things up in it, so that's no good. I do my jacket potatoes in there for a bit before I put them in the oven. So tell me about how long you leave them in for, because oh, my sister's got a I'd recipe say, that she won't share with me. Really? With jacket potatoes? Yeah, her jacket potatoes are exquisite. I have to go to see her to get a decent ah, jacket potato because I can't I do put them. them. It depends how many I'm doing. <laughs> this is very exciting, isn't it? It is for me. <laughs> I mean, I love to go and see our Marlene, but I'd, I'd like to go to do it for, myself. If it was about... Maybe three, I'd put them in for about five minutes or so. Just so they're soft in the middle and then you can crisp them up in the oven. Right, so all together, not yeah, separately? Yeah, I'd do them all together, yeah. Five minutes yeah. and then crisp them up in the oven yeah. for how long? Oh, as long as it takes. Right. So I don't know, my, I've got one of those, I've got an arger, so that you just stick them How in. Have you now? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm regretting it now. Yeah. It's not on much now. <gasps> oh, the life, that, that's it, the way yeah. the life, our lives yeah. go. Well, it's lovely to speak to you. Always nice, always a treat lovely to have a to chat with in. you. And well done on this beautiful Thank book. You. Lydia Monks, this new book, Adouette, is out now.